Hey guys, um, pardon for the strange lighting here, but this just seemed like a comfortable spot today. Um, so Batman 43 feels like the most enjoyable issue in the current arc so far of, um, I guess, of uh, Commissioner Gordon being Batman, the Bat Bunny suit. We get to really uh, get to know the new villain, Mr. Bloom. And um, we get to see all the pieces that Scott Snyder is working with, it seems now. Um, however, uh, in, in what I think of as kind of typical Scott Snyder form, at least in the Batman books, because I didn't find this so egregious in, uh, in his witches, um, he does very clumsy info dumps. It's like he feels he has this very important plot plotted out and he has to give you all the points um, even if it doesn't sort of work in the flow of the comic or at least that's how I felt. So we got a kind of very static scene of Bruce and uh, Nazi punk <laughs> Nazi punk Jim Gordon um, meeting and talking and then we uh, and then we had that, uh, Superman and, and Alfred meeting and talking and explaining uh, where, where we get the very clever explanation, I thought. I just didn't think it was uh, well presented in comic book form, but it is very clever that this uh, special chemical that the Joker had been using to heal himself healed Bruce Wayne's brain of its traumas. So it had to go back and erase his childhood and rewrite his brain, so to speak, so that there's no trauma in there. That's a really, really cool conceit. Um, but it was a, just a whole lot of explaining to Superman. And I guess Superman is conveniently there to have it explained. But I, I would have preferred... I don't know. I guess it's a judgment call for the writer and everything, but I would have preferred some kind of full-on scene with Alfred finding the body and the body that is alive and all that goes with that. Um, then there's kind of the... They bring back this idea that I think was in one of the F Batman Futures End stories and also was in the Batman Annual. Uh, not the, ba the Batman... Detective Comics 600, I think where Scott Snyder wrote a story about endless future Batmans drawn wonderfully by Sean, um, Sean Murphy. So this was a nice callback to that. Um, that is a crazy super science idea, if you pardon the expression. They used to call way over-the-top science fiction super science, uh, way back in the 30s, actually. Um, you know, a little after I was born. Uh, so... It felt like half the issue was this exposition, this, um, what do you call it? You know, expository lumps. Somewhat illustrated by, um, by Capullo, but it felt like Capullo's not trying as hard as he used to, to me. I felt not trying as hard as he used to on making Snyder's expository lumps more visually interesting. So we just get more of a talking head kind of feel. Now maybe Capullo didn't want to do what the same things he's done before, and I admire Capullo's artwork here a lot. So I don't really mean to put it down, I'm more down on Snyder for writing things these ways in the first place. Um, so that said, when you absorb it all, after you're done reading all the dialogue balloons and everything, yes, these are really cool ideas. Also, you can see the um, you can see the way the plot can end to a certain degree anyway, in the sense that we find out that Bruce Wayne has already created his machine for giving clones of himself the traumatic memory that will make them Batman. So something will happen that will force the current happy, peaceful Bruce Wayne to choose to put on the helmet, so to speak, that will change his brain, or someone will force it upon him. Um, I assume the more dramatic choice would be for him to choose it. First, he has to learn about all this because Alfred hasn't really told him about his Batman existence. 
Um, I love the idea of a, exploring the idea of a healed Bruce Wayne. However, I do kind of question that all he does is a little bit of volunteer work. It's great that he wants to help, but isn't there still a great brain in there? You know, one of the smartest men in the world. Isn't he going to be working on grander projects or something? Um, maybe he is, and we just haven't had that revealed up to us yet. Or maybe the idea is that he's kind of childlike at the moment. Um, but it's funny, to me it's funny, because I still never quite buy into Snyder's actual characterizations of Bruce Wayne, even though he has all these grand ideas about Batman and Bruce Wayne and everything, you know, down in the dialogue, in the moment, scene by scene, I never, I, I less often buy into the actions of his Batman, the actions of his Bruce Wayne, the way he talks and interacts with other people, not nearly as much as, say, Peter Tomasi, um, who's the other, the most recent person whose Batman I feel like is spot on. So it, there's a certain uh, weird double feeling where I love some of Snyder's ideas, but then I don't love um, his, his deeper feel for things. I almost wish he and Tomasi could team up, uh, Snyder plotting and Tomasi writing or something like that, and Capullo drawing. Um, the second half of the issue is awesome. Capullo gets to go to town and do some all-out... There's still a lot of dialogue here, isn't there? But, but the dialogue eventually fades away to nothing, um, to pages without any dialogue at all. And these are amongst the best pages in the book, although I wouldn't have minded some text on the pages. They're also the most exciting coloring and layout and action and everything like that. Um, so although the book fell off balance to me, there was still there was a good something good about the first talky part, and then there was a lot good about the second kind of action part. I love the interaction between Bloom and the Penguin, and the Penguin seems to win, and Bloom seems to win. Um, I'm guessing in the way things happen in here, somehow Penguin has not been seriously hurt, uh, just for the convenience of it. I love this last page image with Bloom. Um, Capullo is just the right artist for horror mixed with superheroes, in my opinion. Um, I was a bit kind of bummed I saw an interview with Capullo and Snyder, and Capullo obviously believes in loyalty and brotherhood, and he's saying, you know, on camera with Snyder, um, on CBR, um, you know, that he will never draw Batman except with Scott Snyder. And Scott Snyder's like, oh, and I always want to draw, I always want to do Batman with Capullo, but of course there are other artists. I mean, because he's already done Batman many times with other artists. He's not going to say, oh, I'll limit my Batman writing to just when Capullo can draw it. So that, there seemed like there was an awkwardness there. I don't know if Capullo noticed it, or maybe it was all in my mind. Um, Snyder always looks a little uncomfortable on the camera anyway, so I could have been projecting. Um, and it's not his business to be in a brotherhood with Capullo and only write with him, but it's not Capullo's business to do that either. I'd love to see Capullo do Batman with some other writers. I mean, my dream would be like Charles Soule coming to do Batman. He's exclusive at Marvel, so it doesn't seem like that'll happen anytime soon. I'd love to see Tomasi and Capullo team up. Um, and I'm sure there's, there's other writers, if I, you know, gave it some thought, who would be really interesting with Capullo. Um, all that said, I enjoyed this issue. I was glad I read it. Um, I still, the, my biggest issue with Snyder is kind of his success, that the people at DC think of him as their leader, um, their power base, so that all the other Bat books have to follow in steps, so that there is no Batman, there is no Bruce Wayne Batman in any of the the proper DC Universe proper. Of course, we can get it in Arkham Knight or whatever. So, um, you know, I noticed that in Batgirl. I, I, I have a storied history with the current Batgirl. I hated them the first issue um, because they completely gutted the character of Batgirl that I had been enjoying, enjoy, enjoying a lot in the Gail Simone run. However, 
I did sort of notice that they were doing a lot of interesting things just in terms of the art of comics. Um, and so each as each issue came out, I'd like say, no, I'm not going to get Batgirl, and then I would go pick it up a week or two later. Unfortunately, that caused me to miss the last two or three issues because they sold out. Um, hopefully I can eventually dig them up. But, and I thought that this issue... I guess this is maybe the second issue that involves um, Robot, Bat Bunny, Jim Gordon, Barbara's father, Batgirl's father. Um, and in this issue, I thought they were doing a decent job, but I did a, a decent job of incorporating the James Gordon plot into their Batgirl. But to a certain degree, he takes over, and I feel this is this issue is a lot less strong than what I'd been reading before. Um, even though they've done as good a job as you could expect them to do when they have to become a part of what's going on in Capullo and Snyder's Batman. But I, you know, even with Gail Simone, I saw it always felt like her run was interrupted or cut short or twisted a little bit in a way because of someone else's um, big story. As if Batman is always more important than Batgirl, so Batgirl always has to follow in step with Batman, which I thought maybe they wouldn't do since this has become a popular book. Although I think it actually was a popular book before, but, uh, you know, a book that's gotten a lot of attention and everything. So, as I said, I think they did a decent job. It was fun seeing Barbara be able to save her father, even though he doesn't know it's her. Um, although we've all got to think from reading the Gail Simone uh, run, or I think I got to think anyway from reading the Gail Simone run that that Gordon does know it's his daughter, but just doesn't want to know, um, keeps himself from knowing, and um, <clears throat> which was a very interesting thing, and maybe it can be in here too, because he is trying to support Batgirl while while also appearing to obey his masters. And I don't know if we've got the feeling in here such as so strongly of Gordon being a puppet of public relations and such, but maybe we do. Um, but so my main point here is that what might have, they might have been doing great stories if they weren't interrupted by having to sort of live in the shadow of Capullo and Snyder. So I, I just, my big, one of my biggest complaint about Snyder is how every plot arc he does has to you know, take over a couple of issues of every other Bat book here. And it's even worse to me, um, like it was not so bad with the um, the Joker story or the Owl story, although I would have been happy without all those crossovers. I would have liked all those books better without those crossovers. But not it, it feels more egregious to me because I'm less excited about a um, Gordon Batman. I don't feel like I need to explore that issue in more than one one comic book. Um, now, granted, he is her father, so that is an interesting twist. But um, but I just feel creatively, this was a, a very creative group working on this. Um, two plotters, a breakdown artist, and uh, the finishing artist. The art has changed a bit. I... I think I liked it a little better when Cameron Stewart was doing the layouts, but it's still got a lot of interesting stuff, and it feels like maybe the relationship between the line art and the color has evolved a bit since the earlier issues. Um, I'm assuming that this story with her dad will will wrap up next issue. We'll have to see. Um, I don't... I don't know what they're going to... They have our transsexual character who is now engaged. Um, is this just going to be a... The one thing I didn't like about Gail Simone's run is she really didn't do much with the transsexual best friend um, in one way or another as a character. Uh, she was just kind of there. Is she just going to be kind of there? So like, oh, she makes her appearance to make people happy? Or is there more going on here? I think I'm about to be interrupted by some kids... So I will leave it at that for now. I hope to talk about Batman books more more frequently because 
two of my favorite YouTubers are always talking about Batman. Um, Luke Batman video Damien, reviews and Damien. Joshua Hayes. Hi. There you go. I'm almost ready to talk to you. I was making a video. 